thumbnails. They stop the scroll and win the click, as you've just demonstrated by watching this video. They are one of the most important parts of the creative process, but also the biggest weakness of millions of creators. If that includes you, this really does change everything. A simple quiz to kick things off. Which thumbnail are you most likely to click on? In this example, we have two thumbnails, but in this example, we have three thumbnails. Up until now, the creator, a single person or a small team of people, have had to make this very important decision, often with no data whatsoever, and then publish a video with one thumbnail to YouTube. But from now on, everyone gets to decide, which will help the creator choose the best thumbnails for their content. In very simple terms, A-B thumbnail testing works like this. For one video, you upload two thumbnails, and YouTube shows 50% of you users one thumbnail and 50% of users the other thumbnail. After a testing period, obviously the thumbnail with the best performance is the thumbnail to use for 100% of users going forward, unless you decide to do another test. So when entering this video, you saw thumbnail A, but you saw thumbnail B. This sounds awesome, right? Yes, it is. And what makes this even better is that YouTube gives you three thumbnails to test. So you saw thumbnail C. In fact, we can test this right now. Let us know in the comments below which thumbnail you saw upon entering this video. Thumbnail A, B or C. And the comments should be evenly split across the three, right? YouTube's official name for this tool is Test and Compare. It will be free and it's coming to all creators by early 2024. YouTube is slowly rolling this out right now and we just happen to be one of the lucky ones. We didn't call in any favors because to be honest, I don't know if anybody at YouTube knows who I am. But in this video, we're gonna show you how it works and what we found out so far. The tool is incredibly easy to use and to be honest, I would expect nothing less from YouTube. You'll know if you have the tool if you see the test and compare feature when uploading a thumbnail. You'll then be presented with this screen where you can upload two or three thumbnails to start testing. This video is about the YouTube algorithm, nothing new there, and here are my thumbnails. We'll get back to them because we're actually going to test them on a video we're publishing right now. As of time of recording, you'll be able to use this feature on long form videos, live streams that are finished and podcasts. But what you can't use this feature on is content made for kids, mature audiences, or videos that are private. And from a user's point of view, they should only ever see one thumbnail from the test, unless you start a new test, in which case they may see another thumbnail. To find out how a test is going, in the YouTube Studio Analytics, go to the specific video, and from the Reach tab, you'll see this new panel marked as Thumbnail Test. In our experience, we've started to see numbers here after a couple of hours, but obviously it will depend on how quickly data comes in. You'll know the test is complete when you see this message. And if there is a clear winner from the test, YouTube will automatically pick that thumbnail to show to all viewers going forward. Now this test took two and a half days to complete, but we have seen tests take as little as two hours when publishing a new video. If at the end of a test, the numbers are almost even, YouTube will determine an inconclusive result. And as you can see here, we were trying pretty similar thumbnails. You can stop the test at any time and manually set the thumbnail you want YouTube to use. Now then, this video with all of its thumbnails. Before I publish it, I wanna test it on our community tab to see what results we get from there. And so, after 11,000 votes, the results are pretty conclusive. Thumbnail C is going to walk away with this, right? Well, here's the thing. This thumbnail is a little edgy. Some might call it clickbait. And YouTube's test and compare feature doesn't measure performance by clicks. Yeah, let's get to the elephant in the room. Instinct would tell us if we're testing thumbnails, the best way to measure performance would be through a click-through rate or CTR, right? But that's not the decision YouTube have made. Instead, the test and compare tool is measured through watch time share. Basically, whichever thumbnail gets more watch time is the winner. And just to be clear, because I made this mistake when I first looked at these numbers, this is not average view duration. It is the percentage of watch time share between the thumbnails tested. Got it? Good. YouTube's reasoning for all of this is that thumbnails help inform viewers about the content itself, as well as just winning a click. Yeah, we'll get back to that conversation later. As of time of recording, everything you've seen regarding the test and compare feature, including the analytics, is desktop only. But I assume, just like everything else, it will eventually appear on the YouTube Studio mobile app. There you have the nuts and bolts of how all of this works. But what have we found out so far? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to go back to the pop quiz at the very beginning of this video. We have two pretty distinct thumbnails here, and after three hours of testing, the graph thumbnail, rather than the person thumbnail, is the winner. Now, this is an interesting 
interesting result because it kind of goes against basic thumbnail doctrine of always having a human in the thumbnail to create an emotional connection. So naturally, once that test had completed, we wanted to try something else. In another thumbnail test, we put the human back in with more text again than we would usually recommend. And this time the results were heavily weighted towards a human with more text that builds intrigue and curiosity. After two rounds of testing, we're thinking to ourselves, not only do we have a decent thumbnail, but maybe we have a template of a thumbnail that we can use for future videos. Let's refine this a little bit more. We're at such a granular level now that all we're doing is changing the background and the logos between vidIQs and YouTubes. Even subtle changes like this result in a 4.5% swing in watch time. And yes, all of this testing does explain why you've been seeing more of these thumbnails on the channel recently. However, having said all of this, all of this testing is hiding one important point. The video itself didn't perform very well. So all we're doing is making a disappointing situation less disappointing with thumbnail testing. Now it could be argued that the reason this video performed badly was because we were doing all of these wacky tests with new thumbnails our viewers weren't familiar with. But that's not true and we've got the data to prove it. This video performed much better than usual and we tested thumbnails throughout. The AI YouTube robot was winning by a tiny margin. So we decided to drop the worst thumbnail and have the two best ones face off. And in the end, there was a very clear winner. And this is where things get really cool. Once YouTube picked the winning thumbnail for all users, the video noticeably improved in performance. So in that example, the test and compare tool made a good situation even better. As for that winning thumbnail, I did that in 10 minutes using AI. And what's this I hear? The results are in from the video we published all about the algorithm. And it turns out not only do you click on those edgy thumbnails, but you also watch the content too. And what does that mean? Yeah, we're going to test very similar thumbnails, just with different faces and different text. All right then, it's time to get down to business. This test and compare feature, what do I really think? Well, I've got to be nice with you. I love it. I really love it. It is incredibly easy to use and gives you very clear results. In short, it just works. And for 99% of creators, that's all they want. Now, yes, power users like myself always want more. We're never satisfied, are we? For example, in effect, we can only test and compare half the packaging. I want to test and compare titles in exactly the same manner, but that would immediately make things a lot more complicated. I would also like to see the percentage share of impressions as well to make sure that these thumbnails are being tested equally. But to be honest, I'm probably in the minority of just one on that point. And when there is an inconclusive result, maybe it might be useful to check the click-through rate to determine a winner. But, and it may surprise you to hear this, I have been wondering over by the use of watch time share to determine a thumbnail winner. When you think about it, measuring watch time does include click-through rate by default because if a user doesn't click on a video, it adds zero watch time. And as we all know, click-through rate is a very fluid metric. A higher click-through rate isn't always good news and a lower click-through rate isn't always bad news. But you always want more watch time. So it's a much more reliable metric to use. But as a power user, I will say this. What if you could test and compare your video hooks? This would be effectively swapping out the first 30 seconds of a video. Now that YouTube, if you're listening, would be a true measure of watch time share, but also impossible to implement. If we put YouTube shorts aside for a second, because they're kind of an entirely different thing, the test and compare feature is one of the biggest and best improvements to the YouTube platform for creators in years. But there is an inescapable caveat. It adds a lot of competition to the quality of thumbnails and a lot of pressure to individual creators to make more thumbnails. In effect, creators with more time, better thumbnail skills and more resources have just been handed a distinct advantage. Does that mean bigger channels are going to benefit more from this tool? I'll let you decide in the comments below. And if you need help making better thumbnails, this is your next video to watch.